All right. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Thank you all for joining um, New York Theological Seminary's Wellness Wednesdays. Um, this is um, this Wednesday, we're going to actually discuss Black Claude, and we have with us our esteemed professor, uh, Dr. Rafael Reyes, who is an expert in Black Claude, and we are so happy to have him. All right, so without further ado, we are going to jump right in. So, welcome, Dr. Reyes. Hello, hello, thank you for inviting me. I don't want to be called the expert, but you know, I guess for this evening, let's just stick with that. As you know, Blackboard is a is an amazing system, but it's a really intricate system, and there's so much um, in the background. So um, I'm hoping that uh, in today's session we'll learn a couple of tricks here to definitely make you more uh, aware and advanced in the system, and hopefully uh, make it so that it really helps you out um, as you move forward in your programs. Um, I guess I'll just continue on. I, I had, I was given definitely a, a number of questions to look at and whoo, we got, we got more people coming in. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but definitely, uh, you know, the Blackboard system really is an all-in-one stop shop for everything uh, NYTS. Um, it handles the registrar system, registration. So it registers for your courses. It's the learning management system. It's actually the space where you engage with your advisors um, and your advisors can communicate with you um, as well as, uh, as enrollment, getting students to apply and getting them on board. And it actually has an alumni component. So we're, when I say it's an all-in-one um, system, it really is. Uh, and I think the, the philosophy behind it was we really want to care about the student. And we want, and, and for the light, we want to be able to um, communicate through the life of the student from when they begin to afterwards, um, and and that's our uh, that's the vision of the system, and I think that's why we really took it on as an institution to really say we we, we want to be able to have records um, and go through the life of the student and really have uh, everything we need to help them out, uh, but then as well, it's a new system. And we're still, we're still um, catching up. We literally went live um, in the fall um, and worked in real time to work out any problems. So I would like to say first, thank you to all the students here and all of them, all of you who are going to watch later on, because um, you're really journeying with us um, as we transition to this new system. Um, and so maybe with that, I'll kind of jump in and share my screen and show you some of the questions that I received and that can probably make it a little bit easier um, for dealing with questions like, well, how do I get notifications going? Um, maybe a registrar question um, and maybe a, something, you know, what's, a, what's a, something that I don't know about that I should be using on the system. And if there's any other questions, um, well, you know, please ask. Now, when I share my screen, uh, I will not be able to see you because I only have one, I only have one monitor with me today. So if there's anything, um, Kim, if you can, you know, or if anyone wants to just say like, hey, Professor Reyes, um, and then I'll yeah, stop. If we, if we can begin to put our questions in the chat, um, and we will have a Q&A session um, afterwards, we're just going to let you go ahead and uh, power through and then we'll ask our questions at completion and please put them in the feel free to put them in the chat. Great, great. So here we go. So voila, here I am. I'm actually um, here as a student. I have a, a student account here. And the first thing you see is probably something you have not seen before. This is the recent activities. And the recent activities contains, if you can see it, um, actually activities in your classes as well as um, news as well you know so you know you have the the blackboard and we have the the Weber lecture so this is something that was similar to Moodle remember in Moodle we used to have this one that the front page which had all the news articles and any of that important information we have this here but we're probably used to seeing this right this is usually the main page, and this main page contains 
um, your courses and a menu to everything else. So I, I want us to look at a particular um, uh, setup and see if we can get you get it to look uh, like Moodle when you log in um, and get you those notifications. So um, if you go up to right here on the top right hand side where it says your name, and if you have to put your photo in, it'll have your photo. Um, we want to look at two things. We want to look at a uh, number uh, profile and settings. And the first part we're going to do is profile. Profile here um, really is just information that we have as, as records um, on our system. Uh, but I wanted you to know about this because you can fill in certain information that is pertinent and is important, I believe, for a school to have, number one, um, for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, you want to put in your emergency contacts. So if anything happens, if we, you know, if we've been trying to contact you, but we haven't heard anything, at least there's an email that we can go to or a phone and can contact you from there. And you have the ability to do that. The second thing you can do is add a phone. Um, you know, putting your phone will be important. Um, put a phone number there, it saves it, voila. Uh, your email address, this is a CC email. Um, so we only have your student email address on the system, but if you wanted to put in uh, another email address so that it can, any emails that you have can reach there, this is the place to put it. Um, and then you have your general information. We have your first and last name. We may have a couple of other pieces that it may transfer it over, but if these different parts haven't been put in, you might want to. Uh, you know, your gender, uh, pronouns. Uh, that's, that's really important um, right now to, to, to know the pronouns. If you have it here, your faculty will have it when they're looking at your profile for the course or your advisor. That's important for us to know so that we know how to, um, you know, speak to you and to use what pronouns are, are important. And then also, if we don't have it, your religion. Um, we have as we have a whole bunch in there. If we can just fill it out, if yours is not filled out, you can fill it out. That's important. We actually um, get audited, and we need this information: um, how many men to women ratio? You know, uh, what's the majority religious traditions in in the seminary? What are some other ones? So, that's that's a good piece to have. Um, the next part after profile are settings. Now. This is where we really uh, can do some fun stuff. So in the front page, when you log in, you usually get the, your courses. But what if you wanted to get news? You wanted to just say, I, I just want all the news for, my, for the school for the day. Also get and receive any assignments that are pressing. And that comes here with the starting page. Uh, you can see I already have it here, but when I click on edit, it allows me different options. What do I want to start my page with? Do I want to have um, start with my news recent activity page, uh, my news featured page? Maybe I want to start with my resources because that's the most important part. Maybe I'll just want to start on my schedule because I want to look at my schedule. I want to look at um, any upcoming courses, um, if there's any classes for the day, so on and so forth. Uh, progress is the one we the default. And then the last one is an assignment center. Um, you have those options and if you have, you can choose one and that one that you choose will now be your starting page when you log in. For me, it's the news recent activity and that means I'll receive any news um, from the school, number one, and number two, any activities that are coming up. So for instance, if in your, uh, if in your class you have a, a forum post that's due, it will show up in that recent activity section. If you have a final paper coming up, it will show up in that recent activity section. Okay. The next part is here, notifications. And I think this was the main question uh, that was asked. How can I be notified uh, when I receive a message? Or how can I be notified when an activity um, is, um, added. 
great questions. And it all begins here. Uh, in Moodle, we automatically pushed all that information to you. But on this system, uh, it's up to you to give us permission to send information to you. That's how the system works. Um, and so in this notification section, you can set that up. Um, number one, your email address should be populated there already. If you want to receive uh, text messages, you're gonna wanna put in your phone here because then it'll provide, it'll give you options. It all, it's, it's all up to you, right? It's all up to you on what you want done. Um, as we scroll down, there's a number of pieces here and let's go through a couple of them so it can set it up. Messages. Messages is like email, right? But it's messages that are held within um, this system, right? Uh, and we wanna be able to receive it in our email. So the one thing I would do is say, check that. And what this will do is whenever a professor or someone in your class uses the messaging system in here, you will receive an email um, saying, hey, you received the message and here's what it said. And you can go from there. Um, the second piece is announcements. You know, we have announcements in the course page. In your course page, there's an announcement section. There's also announcements that are general. So you want to click on setup options and you want to click on the categories that you want to receive. If it were me, I would say you want to click on financial aid announcements and general announcements. Then I would also say that you want to click on under my group's academics, activity, and advisory. I would even also say roles. Roles means um, on the Blackboard system, roles are student, faculty, staff member, mentor, coach. We have those different roles. But, but your role is student. And so if we have, if we want to send a, an email to say, I want to send an email to all, my, all the students, this system will say, okay, that means I'm also going to email it to them as well. So once you have all of these selected, announcements, financial aid announcements, academics, activity, advisory. As a side note, advisory, each of you have an advisor. Each of you are in an advisory group. So when a faculty member or a staff sends something to your specific advisory group, you will receive that email. Um, click on advisory and roles, click on save. Once you have that, you say, now I want it to be emailed to me. Voila, that's good. I would ignore all of this because we don't have um, any sports sections here in the seminary, even though it'd probably be cool, uh, but we don't have not, you know, no sports area. So we don't have to worry about changes, games or practices. What we would like is that financial notification online payment mode. Um, I would say you want an email for that. You're also going to want an email when you have a past due balance um, or a recent activity or upcoming payment due. You want to click um, e uh, checkbox on the email for that. Blackboard is very different from our old system, Campus Anywhere. Um, like I said, it's an all in one spot, so, you know, shop to, to really have everything. And we have access to billing. And so, you know, being made aware of that, hey, you have an outstanding balance or, you know, an update, you know, bill is coming up soon, helps us to be aware and responsible um, for what we need to do. Um, and if you need help, then, you know, you can reach out to the, to the financial office and, and work out whatever you need to work out. It's important to be uh, made known, you know, these, these pieces. So you're not behind and you can, you really have options. Um, the last, I think two more parts is news posted in which you have to set it up as well. And here I would say you want to click on academics, the same pieces before activity, advisory and roles. 
and then click save. Once that has been done, you can click on your email option here. And finally, any bulk email will be emailed to you. Bulk email is general announcements for general emails. That could be done in the Blackboard system. I don't believe we're using that yet. We'll eventually be using that. Uh, but if you do this, you'll be prepared to receive those emails. Once you've done all of this, um, I think you'll be in good shape to receive notifications when an assignment has been added, um, when someone has emailed you within the, the system, um, when there's any billing updates, um, when there's any news or announcements, you receive an email from that. Um, another part that I think is going to be really important is a section on the privacy. Um, the system uses a very different approach for Moodle. Moodle is, you know, you get access to everything. This system says, no, you have to give us permission um, to see certain parts. And this then makes you in full control of what can be seen and what cannot. So on a course page, um, students can see one another. And with that, you'll say, hey, okay, that's cool, but I kind of want to control what they see and what they cannot see. So on the privacy, when I click on student, um, they give me options. I can check or uncheck specific pieces here um, that they'll have access to. Say, yeah, I want them to know my name, but I don't want them to have my email or my gender or any relationships I have. Relationships could be um, uh, relationships to staff, not relationships like brother or sister, um, but you know, staff or these other components. I would actually uncheck that. Um, and then your user photo is fine, but if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Maybe, just maybe, uh, you might want to put in your personal bio. Maybe say, I want my students to, you know, the, my colleagues to know who I am. So a personal bio would be cool. Um, you probably don't want them to know your address, so I would uncheck these pieces so that um, now uh, you say, okay, the students will know my name, you know, my suffix my preferred name, a personal bio. I don't want them to see my religion because maybe I'm walking a different path and I don't need to, them to know my religion. Uh, but use their photo, and that's good. The same thing applies to faculty, non-teaching staff, and a nurse function and role. Um, maybe for the faculty, you'll say, hey, I don't have a problem showing these components. Um, and definitely don't have a problem showing my emergency contact information because a professor should have that. A professor should have emergency contact information um, so that if there's anything wrong, if the students can't reach out to me, at least the professor can um, beyond the student email. But you might say, hey, but they don't need to know my address. If they want my address, they should reach out to the registrar. And so you have control over that. As the faculty. Um, and then the non-teaching staff. Non-teaching staff is pretty much uh, all the administrative uh, staff here at NYTS. So that's like the registrar and the financial office. They'll still be able to see it, but not in sort of like a directory format or in your course pieces. Uh, you know, that's because that's if they, had, they have access to the back records and they need access to that. But nevertheless, um, you can somewhat control uh, what they can and can't see. Just wanted to make that piece there. Um, and maybe to be more clear, registrar and finance, they're not teaching staff, but they're administrators, so they have a, a more powerful role. There are non-teaching staff that do not have that function, and so that, that's what this would control. That's what this section would control. Those who do not have administrative powers, um, over the whole system, but you know, can still see information. You wanna be able to control 
what they can see. Um, and finally, you have this section here, directory settings. Um, we, have the op we have the ability to do printouts and print out directories. So you have an option to say, hey, I don't want any of my information in the directory. Um, I, you can include my name, but I don't want no other information. Or you can include my name and my general settings um, that other people can see. Uh, general directories are, kind, are printed out for a staff um, if, you know, if they need to reach out to students or for some other pieces. So once again, you can control that. That means you have a lot of power here to, um, to, to, to you know, you, you wield a lot of power as to what information can be seen, when the information can, what you want to share, what you do not want to share. Um, and once again, you have a lot of power here as to what type of information do I want emailed to me? And what type of information can I wait to get on the system? And then under login settings, I have the power to say, what do I want to see when I first logged in? Uh, Kim, can I, I want to pause here and see if there's any questions. So I'm going to stop my share for a moment and kind of open up to the rest of the group um, if there was any questions so far on that. You have answered so many of my questions, Dr. Reyes, right now. I, I think just taking us through that, that whole section was a hugely insightful. It's things that are there. And I knew that there was things that would probably make my life a whole lot easier and I just wasn't leveraging them appropriately. So I don't currently have any questions, but I just wanted to thank you for how helpful I know that this is already going to be. Okay. Great. That, yes, that's and I had a, and I had a question as well. Thank you, Jamie, for that. And it, and everything is very, very helpful. Um, I put my question to you in the chat box. Okay, as a student group send messages of announcement that other students can see. So, so, so just to be more clear, student okay. group as in. Uh, so sorry. I'm the so the the student government association. We have announcements. Plus, Dr. Nancy Fields gives me things to get out to everybody, and I virtual I literally have to go in and click on each person that come that pops in my mailbox. But what if there are more students than what I see? They're not getting all the messages. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Um, there is a special and. There's a special community group. So there's a, there's a community function uh -huh. that could be student government of which the student role, which is everyone who's a student is a member of. Uh -huh. um, and that will give you the exact replica of what a course looks like, which is you'll get a bulletin board, you'll get a space for topics, yes. you'll get a roster of all the students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, and then you can use that tool to um, send messages and also create announcements that will show up on their page because they said, you know, I'm clicking on that student role and I want to receive emails for that student role. So um, what, what we'll need to do is post this meet to set that up for you to show you where that's at so that you can start utilizing that, that, that system and that function. Yes, please, thank you. Okay, that's a, that, was a, that was a great question. Um, and there is provision for that. Once again, we're, okay. we're learning the system and it's like, there's so much data. <laughs> so yes. um, I'm glad that you're asking that question because it reminds us, hey, we need to do that. Yes, we need to empower Good, the good. Yes. yes, so there is, there is a space just for you for the student government. Thank you so much. Now, there's another, there's another um, question um, that someone, Sandra Hall is asking, um, how can she find her transcript? So great question. You're not the only one who asked that. So I'm going to tell you two things. Um, number one, yes, there is a way to get a transcript, or at least an unofficial one. Number two, it's not fully done yet. Um, and the reason for that is because you went live, in September, um, we went live in literally just registration and learning management system. We're currently working on importing all the data we have 
in terms of transcripts um, mm -hmm. into the system. Nevertheless, I kind of want to show you where it's at. Okay. Uh, I want to show you where it's at and where you can reach it. Um, so, so that we can do that. So let me let me pause there because that's a wonderful question. Uh, okay. So here I am. The first thing I'm going to want to do uh, is actually go to my progress page. So under my day progress that I can see everything, there actually is a sort of this mini menu of pieces. There's a requirement section, right? And in the requirements section, what it should have is the degree program you're in, um, the number of credits you're taking in the semester and how much you have to go. And you can pretty much, you know, lay this all out. Hey, here's everything I've done so far. It lets you know what courses you've taken and what courses you need more to take in order to finish the degree. So right now, this fictitious student is part of the Doctor of Ministry multi-faith. They've taken, or they're currently taking four courses, two courses in the multi-faith. Um, I use this student for a couple of things. So they're also an introduction to theology and introduction to theological education. Um, and this will tell me in progress. So this is sort of a unofficial transcript which shows you everything that you've taken um, and how much more you need. It keeps track of your credits, um, how much you've taken so far, and how much more you need. And so you can just print it out right there, and it'll just print it out all for you. Um, like I mentioned, it's not complete yet. This is the part we're working feverishly on. We've liver literally exported all the transcripts from our old system and now I'm working to putting it into this new system because they do not communicate with one another. This is the, bad, the, the unfortunate reality of academic systems is that they, they tend to not communicate with one another. So a lot of this is a manual process. Um, so we're working on that. Nevertheless, the, the idea is to reach out to registrar for the moment and ask for the transcript because we have a full copy of it available and ready. But the hope is that in the springtime, this system is usable um, for you to say, oh, I have these courses. I'm missing these courses. I, I know what is needed for me to register. You could speak with your advisor and then move on from there. So Dr. That's Reyes, we, that answers uh, uh, Teresa's uh, follow-up question of when do you estimate a full migration from Moodle into Blackboard. So you're saying possibly sometime in spring. Speaking of Moodle, then are we now still able to access um, information that we have on Moodle? And how long will we be able to access that information? So um, interestingly enough, Moodle really didn't handle that. Um, Moodle, well, what's funny is that Moodle is, you know, you took a course and then you're just there permanently, right? So there wasn't no functions there. And you can look at that and say, okay, I know I took these courses. Uh, with that in mind, I'm, I'm, we're looking for spring to have that fully done, uh, to have that fully done. It's a staff of, of uh, three of us handling thousands of records for to over mm -hmm. 30 years. So, you know, I, I'm just, I just wanna sh like share reality. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a lot of data, um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, we're trying to work hard to get that done. We're trying to work hard. To get so now, how long do we have um, access oh, to Moodle in general? I so, think we don't because I was told that Moodle's gone. Um, I asked someone in registrar and I asked them for my transcript and they told me that they could not access it anymore. Through Moodle? Moodle doesn't handle transcripts. So are you talking about Moodle or Campus Anywhere? Probably campus anywhere, but in in but still, there's a lot of things that are on Moodle for those of us who have been here for quite some time. Uh, papers, um, information uh, from classes that will help us with a credo, etc. How long would we have to be able to access um, either of the two or both, campus door or Moodle? Uh, you know, 
I'm going to tell you the truth. I think to be on the safe side, you'll have to the end of the year. So I think you're going to want to be diligent and go there and say, okay, what courses, um, what ports pieces were done there. Um, and if there's any readings, I would download them. Um, if there were any papers um, that you had put in there, you might want to download them uh, because I can't guarantee that 2022. Um, already we're starting to see transitions with a new web, with the new NYTS website. Um, and they're going to be putting a, you know, an end to some of the older systems. Uh, Camp as Campus Anywhere, which was our old registration system, that's going away 2022. Um, all we have is Blackboard. Uh, so, you know, I, I, what I would do is take some time post courses, you know, after the 17th, take some time to get what you really need and have that. So that by 2022, you know that if, if it goes down, if and when it goes down, you're prepared. You're prepared. I appreciate that. Dr. Reyes, we have a question that's asking about uh, from Sandra Hall. Uh, Sandra, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question or I can read it for you? Uh, okay, thank you, Kim. Uh, Dr. Reyes, how do you post a document and how much time is given for editing? Is that for Blackboard or is that for writing? Blackboard. Excuse me? Like yeah, posting, if you're given, if a student is given an assignment, and I recently, I'm um, taking a class with Dr. Biney, I wanted to post my document. And what happened is I couldn't find the icon for when he sent us the, um, I think it was posted in a particular place. I saw the icon and I was able to upload it and, and, and send it to him. This last assignment that I had, I had to use the old Moodle to get the assignment to him so that I wouldn't be late. So now I'm just asking you for personal reasons, because you know I don't know how to do it. How do you post the document and how much time is given? Because when I had posted my first document, I couldn't go back to do any corrections. So a lot of the parts that you're talking about there is at the discretion of the professor of record. So, um, so I can show you how to upload. Um, but chances are you already know how to upload that. And the professor didn't know how to set up an upload feature for the assignment. So, you know, that, that could be a discrepancy. And, and I can work with the professor on that. Usually, um, usually, and, and, but you know, it depends on the professor. It's about two weeks, one to two weeks tops, um, that we are able to look at a paper um, and then give something back. Uh, we usually try to make a turnaround time of one week, but let's say you have one class of 30 students or 20 students, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So, um, Think about that as a ballpark uh, for faculty. And, uh, okay, uh, Dr. Reyes, I wasn't talking about faculty. I was talking about, for, for instance, if the student posts something, there is maybe uh, a particular idea they had forgotten and they want to add to the document that they posted. When I uh, went back, I, the document told me you know, that was it. I couldn't ch do any changes, any editing. So I was wondering, is, is there a time limit or once we post, that's it? Okay. Are you, okay, I think I get what you're saying. So you're, are, are you asking for, is there a feature that allows for resubmit? Yes, that's the term, resubmit, thank you. Yes, there is, there is that ability to resubmit until the date that it's given. Um, after that, there isn't, but that's a feature the faculty member has to pull in place. So um, I'm gonna make a post-it to say, hey, you know, just in case, allow a student Put that resubmit button there um, so that students have up to the time to, resub to resubmit their papers if they said, oh man, I have a typo or I forgot that citation and they could put it in up until the, the date. Because I, I, I could imagine that's frustrating if you weren't able to. I understand that. Um, and that's probably just a snafu on our side as we're trying also to figure out. Clarifying question there, Professor Reyes. So Typically, right, we can upload and then we're able to go in and and for a certain amount of time kind of take it, you know, re-upload it. 
what I'm hearing you say here is that the way that BlackBot is set up, when you upload something that one time, it's done. There is no getting it back. There is no doing anything, but the professor has an option to create a resubmit feature as part of that assignment and they can set a date for how long you're allowed to resubmit. Am I understanding that correctly? Um, actually, all learning management systems have that function. I can say, yeah, I don't allow resubmits. Once you submit, you submit. And then they have an extra feature that says allow resubmitting a document until the day it's due. Okay. Once the day is due, then, you're, then no, you're not allowed to resubmit because that's when it was supposed to be handed in. That was the case in Moodle. Um, that's the case now. That's, that's a, like a sort of like a de facto feature of most learning management systems. Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, yeah, I, I can understand that frustration. That's all I'm going to say. I, I, I hear that frustration and I, I'm, I'll see if I, I want to bring that back to faculty to just as a reminder on that, because that's important. That's important. Thank you for sharing that, Sandra, on that piece. Thank you, Dr. Reyes. I think that's one of the things overall, Professor Reyes, if you're going back, is I know I'm personally seeing some inconsistency with my professors and the way that they're engaging um, with Blackboard. So I have certain professors who everything is there. My Zoom link is there. It's up to date. My syllabus is there. They're posting assignments there so I can track everything and see my grade and do all of that good stuff, right? But then I have other professors who are basically not engaging and they, they are not placing any assignments there and, and kind of not tracking any of that there. So we're really focusing on like word of mouth kind of communication and then we're emailing over our assignments and things like that. So I know that there's a learning curve and this has kind of been new for everybody, but I think from a student's perspective, it's a little bit challenging in having different professors working in the system in different ways because we're all dealing with something new and, and the not streamlined aspect of it, I think helps, uh, creates a little bit more anxiety for the students. And that's fair. Um, that's, that's definitely, that's absolutely fair. Um, and something we have to work on. I'll, I'll definitely bring that back to faculty that we need to be more consistent in the development of our courses to make sure that it's as streamlined as possible. Um, you, you know, I was, I was thinking that to some degree, um, some of the faculty use the, use the Moodle system and the, this system, uh, you know, quite a lot, right? To make sure you have all these pieces. And some of the faculty sometimes didn't use Moodle at all because they were like, I don't even, want, I don't even know how to do that. And so they have the Blackboard piece here as well. Um, so I, I think that that's happened in both spaces, but this is really apparent, right? Because it's a new system. And like you said, Jamie, we're learning it too. <laughs> if we're learning it, please make the effort um, to learn it as well and really give us the information. Um, and that's fair. You're right, and that's fair. Um, and I can definitely, making a note, um, uh, give me two seconds while I write this note down uh, on my side. All right, while Dr. Reyes is writing that note, does anyone else have a question that they would like to ask? Okay. No, anything so far? Okay. All right. I, I did have one more piece that I kind of just wanted to go over. Absolutely. Uh, on Blackboard, one of the questions that were asked was, uh, is there any feature that we are not aware of that we should be using on the system? And um, I say yes. I think there's something about Blackboard that I find really unique and that it also really helps us out to sort of work out the landscape of your academic semester. Um, so one of the things I do in my intro to theological education classes is that I always tell my students, you have to map out your semester, right? If you're taking three courses, um, once you get the syllabus, you should like write down in the calendar, well, when are the, when are pa uh, final papers due? When are um, exams? Um, are, are there presentations? Are there forum pieces? When are they due? And you kind of want to put that on a calendar because then that makes you aware. And if you're aware of it, 
um, then you can sort of backtrack and say, okay, how much time do I need to write a final paper? Um, you, you know, a uh, final paper requires, hey, I need to create a thesis topic. Once I have my thesis, I need to get my, uh, my resources and develop an outline once I have that for my information. Um, and so then, and I'm gonna share my screen here. I think one of the nice parts of Blackboard is this thing called an assignment center. And the reason why I like it so much is because it lays out in daunting detail every single assignment that I have to work with. Um, and I think that's helpful for me, let's say as a student, and, and I also think it's helpful as a faculty member because I go here often, it's like, what, what do I have coming up? You know, with everything else that's being done, I kind of need a reminder of, of what I need to prepare for and things of that nature. This assignment center really allows me to uh, say, okay, what, what do I need to prepare for? What assignments are coming up that are overdue? Look, I have overdue, right? Thankfully, this is a fictitious student. If not, I'd be going crazy on myself um, because, oh my gosh, overdue. But um, this really, uh, at least wake, wakes me up and say, oh man, I have, to, I have this work to do and it's due on what dates? Okay, what do I need to start preparing for this? Um, so I think the activity center is a powerful, powerful, powerful piece. Um, the schedule, you know, Let's see if it'll show up. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit hidden. The schedule, this, this shows me, hey, what's, you know, where are my classes coming up, right? It may be a simple calendar, but man, it, it helps to say, okay, how do I plan my week out? Here's what's coming up on these days. Okay, I know I have this. Uh, if there's any events going on, they'll place it here. You'll see it. So once again, this is another way of becoming aware and it's a, just a good tool to have. I believe that by clicking this link, you're able to put it on your Google Calendar. So that means you don't even have to come here anymore. You could just stick it to your Google Calendar and it'll, it'll work. Um, anything else? Anything else? I think those are important pieces. I think there's one more piece that I would add. I don't know if this is, you know, the, the thing you need to know, but I think it's an important information to know. Registry. So I know all of you are familiar with registering. You, you, you've, you've gone through that for the September piece, um, and you're also doing that maybe for winter and spring, and that's by going to course and class enrollment. And class enrollment is open for the winter room and the spring term, but a, but a question that I have um, that, that keeps coming up is, I, I don't think I'm getting the correct information um, because it's not telling me dates. So I kind of wanted to share also uh, that that's correct. And that's some, you know, or I, I, that's correct, but also it isn't. And I'll show you what I mean by that. When, I, when I'm in the spring term, when I'm in the spring term or when I'm in the fall term, uh, and I look at a course that I want to see, um, it, it's pretty much clear what meeting times look like. We meet on Mondays from six to nine um, for the date ranges of February 1st to, is that May, May 31st? March, April. Yeah, May, May 31st. Uh, so we know that this setup is meeting times are Monday from six to nine from February to May. Um, and that's good. I think this is the easy part, right, of, of registering. However, when it comes to the winter room and, and the summer courses, you get a little bit different information. It gives you a date range. Hey, we're meeting from January 1st to January 31st, but then it says meeting times are random. Uh, and I know that could bring a lot of confusion. Like, well, what the heck does random mean? I need to know the days that they're on. The system does not have a way to show you what those random days are. It just knows that it's a random set of days. Um, 
And so we're trying to figure out or saying, maybe we need to add in the description what the meeting times are, are for our summer courses and our winter courses so that students are not lost in this random meeting time, you know, uh, space and that they only know that uh, it's from, from January 1st to January 31st and the days are random. So I'm working on seeing how we can implement that. We have to implement that for 80 courses, 100 courses. That means going to every individual one. And that might be just what, what needs to happen. But this part, we can't do anything about during the winter room and summer sessions. Because if you're meeting for a month, you're meeting on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, then on another week, you might meet on a Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Because they're so random, there's not enough space in the record to put all those different pieces. So that's why I think uh, one of the suggestions is going to be in the description let us add the days, um, which will make us to say, we'll, we'll just have to be more uh, diligent and say, okay, for another academic year, they may be different. Once again, I'm going to pause because I just threw a whole slew of information at you and you may want to ask another question. Does anyone have a question that they would like to ask? I know we're approaching the six o'clock mark and people are uh, going to have to start uh, preparing for class. But as we begin to wrap up, does anyone else have a question that they would like to ask, especially about what was uh, just offered to us in information? Under my day where it says checklist, is that important? Is that something that's going to come later? What is it? Yes, um, that checklist is, um, what's the best way to describe that? That section sets up uh, for any type of things that are gonna be needed throughout the academic year. So for instance, if um, enrollment or registrar needs certain information from you, they'll set it up as a form of a checklist to say, okay, welcome to the new academic year. Here are some things that we need from you. And so it'll be based on that checklist. It'll be in that checklist area. Mm -hmm. um, and the checklist will say, okay, um, we want to make sure that, you know, your vaccine information is updated. That's, that falls into a form of a checklist. Um, for those that will be graduating, make, they'll probably utilize a checklist to say, okay, have you filled out the forms? Um, have you done an audit transcript, right? Have you done a transcript audit? Uh, have you met with your advisor? Have you filled out this form? That's the use, that's that space for the checklist. We could utilize that um, and we could say for the specific students that are in year four that have met the credits, um, we can then show them a checklist which will have all those features built in. That's what that area is for. Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Excellent. Well, Dr. Reyes, we just want to thank you so much for spending your time with us. We are so grateful um, to, to have you in this space and be able to ask you as many questions as possible. Thank you so much for being such a great sport. Um, we are going to actually close out. As you know already, this is being recorded, so you can I will send this out to uh, the people that are here and those who um, also have their email address along with um, Jamie, our vice president, as well as uh, Stephanie, our president, will send these out to uh, the people that she has access to. Remember, that's what we were just talking about. Dr. Ray is not really uh, having complete access, but uh, <laughs> Uh, so we'll we'll do the best we can with that. But um, thank you so much again. So I want to just turn this over for just a second uh, to Jamie, our vice president, um, who is going to talk to us about uh, the toy drive. All right. So thank you so much, Professor Reyes, for taking the time. It really was great. Um, I'm hopeful all of you have heard already. We keep hanging and, and reminding folks, but we are so excited this year to have done a virtual tour drive that's going to be supporting the Brotherhood Sister Soul in Harlem. Um, our toy drive, it's been open for a couple of weeks at this point. Everything is virtual. You can go right to the link that I shared here. 
um, and there's options for you to purchase and, and they ship everything and everything is right online there. We have a goal of getting to 100 items. We're currently at 69. So we are so close and we have a couple of more days um, to hit that final goal. So if you guys could take that link, share it along and, and get people excited, it looks really good and it's for a great cause. And we're just really hoping to, to take this to the end. And, and Dr. A, is, feel free to share that among the faculty uh, community as well. And then the link is, is, is right there in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Just remind them because I've sent it out. I've sent out that link as well to the faculty. So you can just remind them that I just wanted to thank Dr. Reyes for doing this. We appreciate it. It's a, been a lot of information that was well needed. We, I don't know if we digested it all, but we at least had something to work with. So we thank you. All right. All right, guys. So I am going to pray us out. Um, thank you all again um, for um, for joining uh, this evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reyes. You are awesome. Thank you for your time. Um, and thank you all for all of you that decided to come on and, and spend this hour with us. We are uh, grateful. So let us just pray out and um, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have given us. We are so grateful, Lord God, for um, our faculty, Lord, for those who um, take time out of their busy schedules to, to help us, to guide us, uh, those who take personal calls, um, uh, take our calls in the evenings and, and on uh, matters that are unrelated to the school that continue to guide us. We are thankful, thankful for the faculty that we have and for us as students, for the love that is between us, God. So we just ask, Lord God, that you continue to cover us. And as we're in this Advent season, we want to be mindful of people who are in less fortunate situations than we are, those who are mentally disabled, uh, those who are um, challenged right now by the criminal justice system, as um, reminded by Dr. Fields, um, as a young man who is has spent two and a half years in prison for stealing NyQuil, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask that your, your grace, that your, uh, your hope, that your peace, that your love would encamp around him and his family at this time, and that they would have an opportunity to help him to get out of jail, Lord God, so that he will not become the next Khalif Brower. And we ask, Lord God, that you would just protect his sanity in this moment and all of ours as we um, embark on this holiday season. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We ask, Lord God, that you comfort them, that you give them peace, Lord God, during this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless amen. you. Have a wonderful evening, guys. Take care. Good to see you, Paul. Have amen. Thank you very much.